Praise Lord Saints, Pastor Anderson here. Welcome to our Bible study. I hope this uh, find everyone doing well. Uh, we thank God for this day He's given us. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And so um, I want to talk to you some about uh, persecution. And I know that uh, with this pandemic we're going through, uh, many times people just can't wait for it to be over with. And uh, they can't wait until 2020 is over. Uh, but what I want to say to you is that you can continue to grow strongly in the Lord even amidst what's going on. And so uh, things come into our lives that uh, we may not fully understand, but uh, I know that the Word of God uh, let us know that uh, that's when you should be walking by faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. So even when you feel like that uh, things are um, in chaos, uh, realize that God is in control and um, God has a plan uh, and he has a plan for each and one of our lives. And so I wanted to keep that in mind. It looked like uh, uh, they have uh, almost a second uh, vaccine that is coming forth and I'm planning on taking it myself so uh, that's something you have to pray about and seek God for uh, so I'm going to take it just the same reason I wear a mask even if it's not uh, just for me it's those that are around me uh, those uh, there's a few that may not be able uh, to handle even a vaccine and we give glory to God for that uh, it's, it's okay to thank man for uh, uh, God using them in, in such ways, but God, uh, man don't deserve the glory. Only God deserves the glory. So I give God all the glory and all the honor. And I thank him how he's kept us, how he watched over us, uh, our families, and how he watched over the church. And I feel blessed truly blessing the Lord. I hope you feel the same, that all is well, all is well. Uh, when, when all is well with your soul, uh, there's not anything that you can't go through when you are in Christ Jesus. Uh, so to get into our lesson, I want to talk to, about uh, persecution. The early church was persecuted and we have very little of that today to that extent. Uh, there are some countries where uh, true Christians is um, prevented from witnessing and they are greatly persecuted, uh, even to such a point that uh, I know a lot of the parent organizations don't talk much about uh, churches in these areas for that reason is that uh, their life is on the line. And so um, Mark 10 verse 30 talks about uh, you will be persecuted um, and they shall lay hands on you in Luke 21 12. Uh, so uh, the Lord says that you know the servant is not greater than the Lord. So if they do do that to me, they been a green tree uh, you can imagine what they will do to you, the dry. And so Jesus had warned the disciples that they will would be persecuted. Not only are we appointed to believe, but we are also appointed to be uh, persecuted. And so um, a lot of time we just uh, focus on the belief part and our flesh, I know, don't want to go through certain things. Uh, but a lot of times when you go through, that will promote growth, uh, not only in an individual, but uh, the entire church. So, um, uh, the, uh, the persecution began almost immediately. You remember Peter and John, uh, they had healed a lame man at the, uh, gate, the gate of beautiful, and um, the Sanhedrin, they brought them before the court and um, told them, you know, we don't want you uh, preaching in this name. 
because it brought condemnation on them because they had rejected Christ. Uh, the Sadducees, remember, did not believe in the resurrection, so they was against any any teaching uh, concerning the resurrection. Uh, in the book of Acts 4, uh, you see with the Sadducees, the elders and the rulers and the strives, um, and in Acts 5 is, uh, let us know that uh, the Sanhedrin's uh, did not want them preaching anything about resurrection. And then we realized that uh, Stephen was martyred. He put, was put on trial and martyred in uh, Acts 6. Uh, as they heard him speak, they became so angry uh, that they rushed him and they stoned him uh, to death. And so that was an intense persecution on the Saul. Remember Saul? Saul didn't do anything uh, half hazardly. And so uh, that zeal that he had as a Christian, uh, he had it as a pers persecutor. He was persecuting the church of God. And he says, had this testimony that he did it ignorantly. Uh, but he was... Uh, persecuting the church. He was hot behind the uh, church of God. And so then uh, the persecution um, also came from Herod. Uh, so um, these persecution was permitted by the Lord and it was to accomplish a purpose in the church. It, it accomplished growth. It accomplished, accomplished growth in the believer and it accomplished growth in the uh, church at large. So there is a reason for uh, the persecution. So it also served as a means of scattering the church. Jesus had told them to go forth into all the world, uh, teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus Christ, preaching the baptism. And so they were supposed to go through the entire world, but you know that they uh, been having things in common and enjoyed each other company they got to the place where they was satisfied with where they was and so uh, when God raised up uh, Saul began to persecute the church and, and when I say that I don't mean it uh, like some may take it uh, but it just means that God allowed it it didn't mean that um, God was causing any kind of harm but anyway he allowed it and so uh, the saints were scattered because of the persecution that arose uh, through Saul or uh, Peter I mean uh, Paul later on they ch he changed his name to Paul so um, uh, the, the first uh, persecution that we see um, was against uh, Peter and John. They had uh, healed a lame man and they were thrown in prison and they was bought, brought before the council and that's when Peter preached this marvelous message. Um, uh, and they was accusing these men. And look what happened when Peter began to preach. Um, he was no longer a the one accused, but he became the one, the, the, the accuser. He began to tell them about how they had took Christ and how they had nailed him to the cross and how they had murdered him, had killed him. And so uh, they in turn threatened them with violence and said, don't preach anymore or teach in that name again. And so we all know that that didn't stop them uh, we remember when they came together and told the church what happened to them and the church began to pray. The Bible says that uh, things were shaken and they were renewed in the Spirit of God. And it, they went forth doing miracles and uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. So uh, it didn't stop them. It, it emboldened them. God uh, gave them a, a fresh anointing and it, it gave them the boldness they need to continue to preach and teach in the name of Jesus Christ 
against persecution, uh, even though they were persecuted. And so uh, the leaders of that day uh, was against the apostles for preaching uh, the word of God. And even with the wisdom of Gamaliel, you remember uh, Paul's teacher that told him not to mess with those folks. And, you know, Paul had this zeal about him. And he went anyway and began to persecute uh, the church of God. And so he had told him, let him alone. For if this counsel is that the work be of men, it will come to nothing. And that is still true. That is great wisdom uh, from this teacher of Paul is that if there's something that God is doing, it is in the plan of God, then you don't have to worry about it. Nobody's going to kill it. Just like the dream that he gave Joseph. Uh, you can try as you might, but you will not kill the plan of God. Plan of God is going to go forth. But if it's a council of men, it will fail. So that's what he was telling uh, Paul. They don't need you in the, in the mix, what he's telling them. Because if, it, if it's uh, of man, and they had a lot of examples of men that um, took things their own way and, and thought that it should have been a certain way, and they find themselves fighting against God. A lot of times people can think that they are doing God work and all the time they are fighting the program of God. And so you have to be prayerful. You have to be uh, tuned in. Uh, I remember these, uh, uh, some of you may not be old enough to remember. I might be telling the age a little bit. But we had the transistor, uh, well I shouldn't say transistor radios. The house radios had tubes. And uh, those radios, you could pick up signal according to the weather, according to the, uh, the cast of the, the clouds in the sky and stuff like that. At night, sometime at night, you got a better signal. And so uh, I remember the station we would listen to. I, I still, it's still in my mind, is, is uh, the uh, DJ was John R. And WLLC, Nashville, Tennessee. And one of the, sp the sponsors was that Royal Crown hairdresser. Uh, but you could get him late at night and you can tune him in. And so that's how you have to do to the Lord. You have to tune the Lord in. You can't listen to jibber and jabber, uh, all kinds of stuff uh, that the enemy is trying to put in your mind or what your flesh is trying to dictate to you. But you have to be in tune in to uh, what God is saying. And so... Uh, the Holy Ghost is able to keep us, the Holy Ghost is able to strengthen us. We have that same spirit in us today as they had in them in that day. And so uh, there's no reason why we can't make it. Even during a pandemic, there's no reason why we shouldn't continue to grow in Jesus Christ. Uh, continue to, uh, don't be shaken. And don't be afraid, because God did not give us a spirit of fear, but what he says, of love and of power and of a sound mind. Now, I can't tell you, now why did uh, um, Stephen get killed and the rest of the apostle uh, made it? That is in God's hand, that is in God's control. Uh, the thing is about God, God is speaking life. He speaks life into his people, and it's not uh, how you die. But it's whether you die in Christ. That is what we all striving to do. When you draw your last breath, you want to be in Christ. Uh, whether it's violently or whether it's peacefully on your bed, uh, whatever it is. Uh, because uh, uh, God's ways is too wonderful for us. There are certain things God let us in on. The Bible let us know whatever he let us in on. It is for us and it is for our children, our children's children. But there is some thing God keep to himself. And I often say that uh, some things that God keep to himself, even if he wanted to tell you, you probably wouldn't understand it anyway. Uh, because compared to God, the Bible says we are like worms. And so we do not have the mind. We do not have the, the resource. We do not have the strength that God had. And so we have to leave it in God's hand and trust the Lord 
and believe that scripture that says all things are working together for good to them that love the Lord and are the call unto his purpose. And so these apostles was thrown into prison and the Bible said God sent his angel to deliver them. And the next morning when the, the, the council was set for trial, guess what? They found them gone. Okay. And we have to, they, they had guards at the prison. They did not just have uh, um, you in, in places that wasn't secure, but they was very secure places that they locked them into. Uh, but God sent an angel and, and uh, the next day they was gone. And so uh, they was, uh, found them. And guess what they was doing when they found them? They was in the temple preaching the words of life. Hallelujah. They didn't run. They didn't leave the city. They went back preaching the word of life. Okay. And so um, it, it's uh, imperative that we obey God rather than man. And so it also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey the, him. And so um, it's clear that obedience is necessary in order to receive the Holy Ghost. Okay. And so um, they also were persecuted by the king, King Herod. King Herod uh, brought persecution upon the church. Uh, remember, King Herod was um, Herod Agrippa's, uh, the, the first, he was a grandson of Herod the Great, who was a king when Jesus was born. You remember what he did. And so, um, he had cultivated the goodwill of the Jews by observing their customs and he, in, in order to further win the favor of the Jews and um, Herod and James and um, what, I'm getting ahead of myself. He, he uh, cultivated the goodwill of the Jews by observing their custom and he also um, ordered to win the favor of the Jews and um, Herod had James and, and the brother of John killed. And so he had the, the head of James cut off a similar death to that of John the Baptist. And so it would be noted that the apostles, one of whose brother was the first to be killed, the other John was the last to die. And so um, uh, he saw that that pleased the Jews and he proceeded to seize Peter and he's planning to kill Peter. Okay. Uh, so he did not want to kill him before the rites of the Passover. See, uh, people can be, uh, appear to be religious and still just be as evil as can be. A person can appear to be religious with a Bible in their hand and all the time uh, going against the will of God. And so just because they got a Bible in their hand, just because they were uh, quote, quoting some scripture and know the books of the Bible and appear to be holy, uh, look at that thing again. Because many times these people is just uh, getting what they can get out of. There's some weak-minded people. There's some people that really don't know the true gospel of Christ. And every time somebody says, oh, Lord, uh, they feel like they can trust them and put that trust and that confidence in them. And that just is not the way it is. And so Herod, he knew how to work the Jews. He knew how to um, uh, get accolades and things like that from the Jews. So uh, the Bible says that uh, God rescued Peter. Hallelujah. So then he rescued Peter. And you remember James was slain. And so uh, just because an individual lose their life, especially they lose their life in the gospel, is no reason to think that they did not have a relationship with God. It was just their time. And so uh, life is fragile. We don't know what, when our time will be. I could uh, go to sleep this uh, evening and not, or I might not even make it to evening. And so that's all in the hands of God. I've seen it too often. Uh, individuals that be laughing and talking one minute and then the next hour 
uh, you get a call and they passed away. And so that's how fragile life is. And so the important thing is that we have a relationship uh, with Jesus Christ, have a relationship with God. Okay. And so Harry was the type of person that uh, he desired the applause and the the, uh, 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 the, the, the people. He, he wanted the applause of the people. And uh, because of that, isn't that something? You remember how he died? The Bible said he gave this great speech. And when he gave that great speech and people said, this is not a man. This has to be a God. And instead of him letting those people know, that's not me. Said, said, what, what's happening? That has to be in God. Don't, don't tell me people don't know. You know that if you get in a, a group of people, well, I don't care if you was preaching or under the anointing, and you tell me you don't know. Yes, he know. He knew that that did not come from him. Uh, God has a way to, of showing you that he is more powerful uh, than all. And Herod uh, preached that, and he should have known that wasn't him. He should have known that uh, he did not have that kind of influence, that kind of knowledge. And when he opened his mouth, God was filling that mouth. God was, was speaking through him. And when those people began to praise and give that uh, accolade to him, he should have said, that, look here, I'm just a man. He, he should have did like Peter did. Hey, uh, get up. I'm just a man, just like you. And so um, many times when people do that, it's their pride that will keep them from acknowledging God. Your position never get too high that you don't acknowledge God. There is a saying, it, 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 it's, uh, you have to be big to go low. Now, I, I remember the first lady, uh, Obama, had that saying that when they go High, we got to go low. But what she didn't finish saying is, you got to be big to go low. It's the, the small people that want to go high. Because uh, a, a lot of times, I'm not talking about in position, I'm talking about in character. A big person is able to humble himself. It's that little person, mark my word, just take a look at it. It's that little person that uh, tried to take the high higher part, the high road, the, the, the haughty part. Um, and you, you know, I, I'm thinking of somebody now. I, I, you might know who I'm talking about. It, it is a very known political figure. I'm not just going, I just don't want to call his name <laughs> right now. You, you'll know who he is. But he had this thing about drunks and he would not drink. He would not take a drink because he said that's weakness. But that same man love accolades. He love when people praise him. He can't stand it. Matter of fact, that he can't stand it if a man make a joke about him. He can't make a joke about himself. But it, it's it's uh, it's amazing that a person that will not take a drink from liquor, because that's not the only way to get high. Liquor is not the only way to get high. Uh, you can get high off the wrong thing. And, and so he, he liked the accolades of the people and uh, he, he liked that position of power and he don't want to lose he don't like losing and all that carrying on that is because believe it or not that is a small individual there's a, a individual that don't know who he is and don't know his position that God has given him and so you remember that it, it takes a, a, a big man to go low uh, a small man don't use a go low. He he gonna try to get over. It. He gonna try to to get high, and so uh, Harry was one of those those type of men. He wanted the accolades of the people, and um, rather than doing what was pleasing to God, and you remember Jesus said, uh, "Don't worry about anybody that can kill you, but what you ought to fear." is the one that can destroy body and soul. And so what he's saying is, what you ought to be reverence is the thing of God. And so I hope uh, this uh, Bible study has been a blessing to you. I'm asking that we continue to pray for one another. I hope you have a beautiful and wonderful 
um, holiday coming up in the Lord uh, with the help of God. The Bible, as, after we have obtained help from the Lord, we continue unto this day. So saints, give God all the glory and all the praise and be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank <laughs> you.